from my side, uh, welcome to the focus focus session, um, in which we outline the plan for the exploratory work that we have prepared in the Euro system uh, for a while, and which we have also indeed received feedback on uh, in our related contact group, which I uh, which I share. So on the next slide, I gave uh, the outline for the for the presentation. Sorry, it's one slide uh, one slide back. Sorry, that was a bit too quick. Maybe. Yes. So then the outline for the frame. Yes, exactly. So uh, the presentation now. So this is a first of three three more before we go to the question and answers. Um, so the framework for the exploratory work. So this is now firstly the design principles. Thereafter, we'll discuss and explain the timeline and the solutions in scope, and also the envisioned settlement for the purpose of the exp experiments and for the trials in particular. So the design principles. So the exploratory work will actually rely on existing regulatory, functional, and operational framework of the target services. So this is not a sandbox approach, and this is important to have in mind because it will explain why we do something specific for the trial, which we would not do, uh, which we would do differently in case this would be a long-run solution. The trials will also rely on the Eurosystems T2 for ultimate settlement of the cash lag of the transactions in central bank money. In the in the slides, you will see that as a CEBM, just because it is repeated so often. It's a long long word, but central bank money. So there are no changes to the current rules for accessing central bank money. So basically, it's the same participation as for the current target services. The exploratory work is planned to run from May of 2024 to the following November. And of course, also here now the disclaimer that Ulrich had already said, but it's important to have in mind that this uh, this does not say that actually any implementation decision has been, that any decision for implementation later has been taken regarding any solution. Nor do we commit through our exploratory work to do so. So that brings us then to the timeline, which is then on the next um, on the next slide. So. The work kind of the, has, has, has started in the sense that actually, indeed, our call for expression of interest has been published on the 13th of December. And it's open to all market participants subject to eligibility criteria. Then in this uh, turquoise or, or blue greenish box, so it means that actually, as of, as of now, uh, you can actually apply and register, and register, and the onboarding will be actually possible. So as of as of now. So each eligible participant, that includes also market DLT operators, will contact their respective their local NCB for onboarding, which and that NCB will then liaise with the solution providers. Um, so the central bank solution providers who, who actually provide them the three solutions that Ulrich has talked about. The wave one applications uh, are feasible until the end of January. And that would then bring us to the, to the blue box. So to offer the DLT exploration on a timely basis, we have announced our firm plans. And actually why we speak, so to say, we are finalizing also the, uh, all of the remaining paperwork so that a decision on this uh, can be taken early next year, also on, the, on all of the modalities. And thereafter, actually subject to actually a uh, favorable eligibility assessment, then actually the, the, the legal framework can be signed and the document can be signed. And that will be actually between each national central bank and the participant in their jurisdiction. And also, where applicable, the solution provider, central bank, and the participant will also sign another agreement. So that actually in May, the exploratory work can start. That brings us to the blue box. So as of uh, in May, 
uh, uh, trials and experiments will be conducted. Participants take part, uh, can take part in these, but not only can they take part, of course, this whole exercise serves also for us in the central bank, but also for the whole market to learn. So we are asking the, participate, uh, the participants also to provide some reporting on, on metrics uh, and criteria that we are actually specifying so that we can actually better assess, assess afterwards the solution, analyze them. So that's also important. You also see actually a dashed arrow. There's also a wave two. So if you are not ready yet for a wave one for the full six months, uh, for which one has to apply until end January, there's also another window open where one actually has to express an interest until end of April so that the exploratory work uh, that actually those uh, eligible, found eligible thereafter, can actually start also in July. It does not mean that those participants will also have another six months. So the time window will be shortened because in November, and that's the reddish box on the, on the right hand side, in November, the exploratory work will end for all participants. Now, coming to the solutions in scope in a bit more detail. So the proposed Eurosystem work um, is focused on the three interoperability-based solutions that are offered by what we call the SPCB or solution provider central banks. So that's firstly the trigger solution by the Deutsche Bundesbank. Secondly, it's the TIPS Hashlink solution by Banca d'Italia. And it's the full DLT interoperability solution by the Banque de France. The Euro system will conduct jointly with the market trials. That means there will be actually actual settlement of transactions. We can also and will also actually set up experiments. So these are actually then mock transactions. How does it look in more detail? That's here on this chart. So on this chart, you actually see three technical environments that will be used to interact during the Eurosystems trials and experiment. On the left in blue, what you see are the target services. That's mainly the TE2 service, so the real-time cross settlement or RTGS component that's used for business as usual payments and will also be used for the final central bank money settlement and also for liquidity transfers with uh, ESMIC connectivity. So, and we, you see there that we, for the different solution, we actually uh, then have application to application interfaces and also user uh, to application. In yellow, we have the actually three solutions provided by the solution provider central banks, just mentioned before. And they are used to firstly orchestrate the DVP process through an interoperability mechanism between the respective uh, platforms here in yellow and the market DLT, which is then put in green. So they are uh, so the the yellow solutions. They will orchestrate the uh, yeah. So they will orchestrate that uh, that DVP and will. Uh, and um, through their interoperability mechanism. And they will forward also instructions to the to T2 for settlement or provide a pro proxy central bank money settlement relying on the exploratory liquidity as part of the escrow process, which I will actually also explain in a minute. <clears throat> so in green is the market DLT uh, that is used for the settlement and delivery of tokenized or native digital assets, so security tokens, and would be operated by eligible market DLT operators. So in short, here in this case for, for DVP transaction, they will be coordinated via different mechanisms. So we as a central bank, we will provide solutions for the central bank money cash payment or the cash leg of the transaction, while the market DLT operator ensures the DVP and delivers the security. Now the envisioned settlement for this during the trial. So firstly, the envisioned use cases, two slides on this. So the, the main focus is here on the DVP use cases, so delivery versus payment. 
There's security settlement and also lifecycle management. So market DLT platforms can connect to the solutions uh, that, have, that we have mentioned before for the settlement of financial instruments available to those DLT platforms. The type of transactions envisioned are, well, delivery versus payment for primary and secondary market operations and other payments related to securities lifecycle, for example, coupon payments, dividend payments. Type of assets envisioned, it's both listed and also unlisted securities, financial instruments according to MIFID, available in the market DLT platforms as either native digital assets, DLT assets, or tokenized assets, so assets actually, so representation actually of existing assets that are otherwise being held in current technology. There can also be additional use cases that we will consider. The exact setup of these, uh, of these will depend on other partners and will be subject to an assessment by the euro system. So that is actually PVP and other payment use cases. So cross-currency and cross-border payments and central bank money, as well as automated wholesale interbank market, interbank payments and central bank money. For example, it could be in relation to actually a use by commercial bank deposit tokens, and then there could be a need for central bank wholesale settlement uh, for the intrabank for the interbank transactions. The expectation that we have is that participants will propose delivery versus payment and payment versus payment use cases that explore the opportunities and benefits of the new technology and set up the necessary partnerships. So that's up for the market. So that is for, for example, for regarding DLT assets, that would of course require that market participants find an issuer, find investors, uh, trading venues, etc. Now coming to the settlement of those assets, and then uh, and first, I give actually a conceptual view in in view of a potential steady state. So just to say also to explain also of where in the trial would we deviate from this and what are the consequences of this or how do we limit any consequences for this? So in a potential steady state where any of these solutions would be implemented, um, it would be the following, like it could be the following. Again, this is a potential steady state. We haven't made a commitment that any of these will be implemented, but in that case, it would be logical that in the trigger solution, which uses together with the TIPS hash link existing technology, central bank money would occur with the existing RTGS liquidity pot because it uses T2. So in the second solution, TIPS hash link, central bank money settlement would occur with a new liquidity pot held on a TIPS-like platform set up by the euro system. So if one applies the logic that is prevailing today. For the uh, full DLT interoperability solution, the central bank money settlement would occur with a new DLT-based liquidity pot held on the euro system DLT. Of course, in the potential case of implementation, the euro system, as it wants to provide central bank money in a, in a relevant form and in a, in a form that market participants want to have. So we would seek to seamlessly integrate any of these solution into our current infrastructure offering. So that could of course relate to connectivity, automated liquidity management. All this, however, would be subject to further liquidity analysis. So nothing we would actually venture into detail now and would be subject to any project decision and then and, and further review. So it's just, again, the conceptual presentation. The final central bank money settlement for the cash leg would be insured by the euro system, while then relying on the market DLT operator to ensure finality of the DLT securities transfer orders, as is the current practice. What is then the temporary setup for the trials? from May to November 2024, where actual settlement would take place. So for the planned start of the exploratory work in 2024, settlement in trials with real transactions would rely on a temporary construct compared to a potential steady state that I mentioned on the previous slide. So the solutions um, or the, the, the the solution provider central bank would provide solution specific connectivity to the different environments. So for the trigger solution uh, the, from the Bundesbank, the DL3S DLT platform, 
by Bank de France or for the tips, tips Hashling platform. For the Tips Hashling and for the full DLT interoperability solution, an ad hoc escrow mechanism would be set up in the RTGS system. So it would lock central bank money funds during the trial process. So the liquidity would be locked for intraday only for several hours a day, which I will specify further. Nonetheless, this is actually a, a realistic technical process will be tried with all solution on the basis of which these solutions would be assessed. So in other words, the feel of the solution will be like it would be real. For example, you instruct a payment in the exploratory liquidity, and it would be actually executed with whatever the speed of the application is. And this is what would be measured. So even if the transaction, the DBP transaction, would not be legally a final prior to a T2 payment at the end of the day. So this is, of course, and, and would, of course, also be subject to the settlement finality of the asset lag, depending on the rules applicable to the eligible market DLT operator. So this is a temporary setup that is specific to the trials. It's not something of how it would be pursued for a potential implementation. But again, as mentioned at the beginning, we use the current rule of, uh, for target services and did not do changes for that. And the escrow mechanism in the support by national central bank banks. So each local national central bank sets up an escrow account as a temporary construct to support their own eligible market participants who wants to conduct trials with a tips hashling solution and with full DLT interoperability solutions. So participants, what they would do is to fund an NCB escrow account at the beginning of a trial intra, of, a, of a trial intraday process. So the funding is made with the full transfer of ownership of that amount to the National Center Bank. Then on a one-to-one -one basis, so if you pay in 10, if you fund for, for 10 million euro, you will get exploratory liquidity, which would be minted at the start of a trial day on a one-to-one -one basis. So you pay in 10 million, then you will get exploratory liquidity on, for 10 million relative to the total amount held, of course, then on the NCB escrow accounts in T2. The defunding later would occur at the end of the trial day on a net basis or gross basis in some exceptional cases, resulting in the final central bank money settlement of net balances during the trials and target services. Of course, what you get back depends on what you have paid or what you have received as payments. So the balance at the end of the escrow uh, of the, for the escrow account is at the end of the day is zeroed at the end of the trial day at 3.30. Important to note is this is trials. So we don't have a absolute high availability, super redundant infrastructure in place for the purpose of the, of the trials. So from that point of view, it's important to note that the liquidity use for trials should not be critical for participants to meet their obligations outside exploratory work. This is to cover an unexpected case, but still possible case uh, that in case of an incident, it may not be poss possible to transfer the liquidity back at the end of the day. In that case, when so the case of an incident, the funds would remain on the NCB's balance sheet until they're being paid out and they will not be remunerated as the funding of the escrow accounts occurs with full transfer of ownership to NCBs. Yeah. So again, it, uh, the liquidity that you use should not be critical actually for participants to meet your obligations outside the exploratory work. When are the solutions available? So for trials and uh, experiments could be conducted on any business day of target services calendar during the May to November 2024 window. Of course, you're familiar with the weekday rules and when and the few days when uh, target services are closed. Um, so basically for the trials, you can do that on any day during the, while the, uh, the six month trial window is open. For experiments, there could be specific days that we choose. So that is a bespoke development. Um, the settlement, settlements under trials would occur on an intraday basis only in T2 prod. So from nine o'clock to two, to two o'clock settlement window for the trigger solution, and uh, from 10 to two o'clock settlement window for the tips hashling and full DLT interoperability solution. 
The settlement under trials will be subject to volumetric limits. Value limits could be added if the euro system deems this necessary. So here more on the um, here more on the business case. So on the opening hours for settlement during trials. So you see there that the day is actually uh, the the day is there between nine and uh, is open between nine and three thirty as planned. And then there's a yellow is a contingency window from three thirty to five. So firstly for the trigger solution. So start of the day is at nine o'clock and then payment instruction can be sent to the trigger chain. Direct debits and credit transfer messages are being then sent to the RTGS. It's useful, of course, to say so uh, in blue are the activities in the RTGS. In gray are the activities conducted on the uh, DLT platform, so DL3S or the TIPS hashlink trigger solution. Then and then the payments, so the payment instructions in the trigger chain, they can be actually so uh, can be done from uh, between nine o'clock and two o'clock. And then uh, at two o'clock, which is the end of the settlement for um, of the settlement window, then the payment there will be payment return messages sent to RTGS or the RTGS interim account is, is emptied. And then uh, there's a co the contingency window in case the, uh, the balances are not zero on the interim account so that the payments could be returned. The funds could be returned. For the TIPS hashling and the full DAT interoperability solution, um, there are liquidity transfers, uh, so LT in this presentation here, in the RTGS and the funding. So the participants transfer the funds to the NCBs, again with a full ownership transfer. Then the solution providing central bank creates an exploratory liquidity on the DLT platform or on the tips in the tips hashling solution, as mentioned on a one-to-one -one basis. And that is then happening until 10 o'clock. And then basically the settlement in DL3S, uh, DLT and the tips hashling can take place. So then actually the business can start. So that's the that's the uh, the difference also in the opening hours when you effectively can, can actually do the settlement uh, compared to the trigger solution. And uh, that actually then lasts until two o'clock when the uh, when the solution providing central bank removes or burns the exploratory liquidity on the DLT platform and in TIPS hashlink. And then there's a realignment depending also of, uh, of how payments have been made or have been received um, among the NCBs. And then actually the NCBs pay out to the participant according to, to the result of, of the payment processes during the day, the payments paid and the payments received. And then again, there's also the possibility for further realignment and defunding in case of an incident in the period from 3.30 to 5 o'clock. So this is the framework for exploratory work, the design principles, the timeline, the solutions in scope. So which have been, as I, uh, as I mentioned, so um, uh, and also the payments that we that we foresee. So it's the it's the the DVP in particular, but we actually also uh, we are also one that actually DVP and uh, sorry PVP cases and and other payments are being proposed. So those we will have to consider then, uh, and there would be a case by case assessment on the non but on the non DLT cases. Um, we may we will also reserve we will reserve the possibility for prioritizing in case we actually have uh, run into op uh, in, into into volumetric uh, limits, but those uh, actually will be informed and agreed and and uh, everybody will know when the uh, when the tr when the exploratory phase comes of uh, of what would be possible. So the next actually is then actually is the uh, Claudine. From our team, of course, there are quite several people. Uh, Claudine is actually senior marketing infrastructure uh, expert from my from my team, but of course, there have been quite some more, not only at the ECB but in the whole Euro system, working on this. Claudine, thanks, Holger. Um, so uh, again, welcome everyone. Uh, so I'm working on the market in innovation and integration team with Holger, and I'm delighted to be here today to go through the requirements for participation in the Euro systems exploratory work. So on the next slide, you will see that uh, the Eurosystem will follow to the extent possible an open approach to participation. 
and we aim to accommodate insofar as possible all market participants who uh, become eligible to participate in, in our exploratory work. Um, however, there, there will be certain operational boundaries due to the lightweight nature of the trials and uh, in line with one of the key design principles already outlined by Holger, we will continue to rely on the existing existing regulatory, functional and operational framework of target services. The policy for accessing central bank money will not change, nor will it be modified for the purposes of exploratory work. That being said, we aim to support innovation and maximise learning opportunities, both for ourselves and the Euro system, but also for the participants. So with this in mind, the eligibility criteria for participation in our exploratory work foresees two types of participating actor, namely market participants and market DLT operators. So um, we are seeking responses uh, on the next slide. We are seeking responses to the calls for expression of interest, which uh, was launched yesterday from the two types of financial market stakeholders. Uh, firstly, eligible entities interested in providing DLT based platforms for wholesale securities settlement, relying on euro central bank money settlement of the cash leg. Such entities would connect to one or all of the three interoperability based solutions, namely the trigger solution, the tips hash link or the full DLT interoperability. Uh, this would be to enable the DVP transactions and also the possibility for a broad range of operations related to securities lifecycle management. In addition, we are also seeking um, responses from eligible entities who wish to access the interoperability solutions for the Euro central bank money cash leg settlement. Payment use cases could include cross-currency and cross-border payments in central bank money, as well as automated wholesale interbank payments in central bank money. For example, in relation to interlinked central bank money and commercial bank money transactions, which could involve the use by commercial banks of deposit tokens with a need for wholesale settlement in central bank money. Eligible participants would be able to conduct trials with real settlement in central bank money in production environments and or experiments which refer to mock settlement in test environments. So on the next slide, uh, it sets out our, or this slide, it sets out the detailed eligibility criteria for the two participant types. Uh, so firstly, the eligible market participants. So the eligible market participants for participation in the exploratory work would be any of the entities with access to T2 as set out in the target guideline. So that's within the meaning of Article 4 and Article 7 of Annex 1 Part 1 of the target guideline. Eligible market DLT operators then would be either central securities depositories, CSDs, as authorised under the CSDR, and NCB run CSDs exempted from the CSDR authorization procedure, both of whom would be operating a security settlement system based on DLT or operating a DLT platform. Operators of a DLT system or a DLT trading and settlement system as authorized under the DLT pilot regime regulation are a third category which encompasses credit institutions, investment firms, market operators and other licensed financial institutions operating a DLT platform as duly licensed under CRD4, MIFID 2 and or other relevant national legal frameworks. These would be subject to a case by case assessment by the Euro system to ensure proper risk management. It is important to note that the eligible market DLT operator is an entity that for the purposes of the Euro systems exploratory work is responsible and liable towards market um, participants for the activities occurring on the eligible market DLT platforms that they operate. We encourage interested parties to work together together to ensure that they get the most out of this exciting opportunity to experiment and trial with your system solutions. We will, however, not be publishing information about the stakeholders that have shown interest in participating in the exploratory work. Um, as Holger already mentioned, we expect that participants will propose DVP and PVP use cases that explore the opportunities and benefits of new technologies and that they set up the necessary partnerships. For all categories of participants, participant, or par, um, par, partnerships may be set up jointly to provide a DLT platform and related services to their participants. 
the outsourcing of provisions of services, technical infrastructure, and any of the operator responsibilities to third parties would, as already is the case today, uh, be subject to an assessment by the national competent authorities. Um, uh, also, uh, please note that uh, if uh, such partnerships um, are um, set up, that the uh, entities themselves would need to individually register for the call for expressions of interest. So each party, the eligible market participant and the eligible DLT operator would need to individually uh, submit a, a response or a registration form to the call for interest. Now, um, I will hand back to Holger, who will talk us through this registration process and the uh, timeline for the next steps. Yes, exactly. So, so for the yes, the call for expression of interest now the background. So as said before, we published it on 13 of December. The call for expression of interest is open for market participants and market DLT operators interested in the exploratory work who meet the envisioned eligibility criteria that Claudine has just mentioned. What is there to do? So the participants have to submit the, re their, the registration forms, which are on the website, to their local national center banks. Just to be clear, to the national center banks where the accounts are held in T2, or to the juris or the National Central Bank of the jurisdiction in which the market DLT operator is licensed if you're a market DLT operator. So this submission should actually include background information from you on your eligibility. There are more details in the form. So that includes, so for demonstrating your eligibility, and it's also, of course, on the scope of the foreseen trials and experiments and the choice of the solutions to be used. So you contact always your local national center bank, and that's irrespective of whether you want to actually work with a trigger solution, if you want to work with the tips hash link or with the, uh, with the DLT, full DLT interoperability solution. So for all three cases, you always work through your local national center bank. No, sorry, just one more from the on the slide before, please. Oh yeah. So the deadline, uh, the deadline is actually so for the 31st of January 2024. So end January for all participants. Uh, for all participants who want to start exploratory work in May, so for the wave one and want to benefit from the full six month time window. The deadline for the second wave, where you can start later, so you have more time to maybe have, get your licenses sorted out, etc. So uh, that, that is the second window. There, the deadline for applications is 30 of April. Yeah, for the participants starting to work on the exploratory work in July 2024. Slide, please. So the registration process. So the registration form, as said, it's on the website. It contains three parts, which must be completed in full and submitted prior to the respective deadline. I have to repeat it. So 31st of January for the wave one, 30 April for wave two. And there, so there are three parts. So the first part, as you see here in the yellow, yellow bold part, so the registration part one will be used to assess the eligibility of stakeholders for participating in the Eurosystems exploratory work. So again, please attach all the documentation that you need in order to demonstrate that you're eligible. Then there is registration form part two. That's solution specific. So for each of the three interoperability solution that you may wish to connect to uh, for conducting the exploratory work. So you can choose there to take which one you take or that you take all. I mean, of course, we would be interested that actually participants actually 
are actually involved with all three uh, solutions, if that is possible, because that will allow even more easily actually a comparison of the different solution and will provide more information. But you're free, you're, you're free to choose, but just fill in part two accordingly. Then there is part three, and that comprises a request for additional information on planned use cases for exploratory work, including anticipated volumes. That's for planning because we put, uh, we put, put, put some checks there in, in place. So also just to be clear, if you, a financial market stakeholder, wish to participate both as a market participant, but also as a market DLT operator in the Eurosystem exploratory work, in that case, please actually use two forms. So submit separate registration forms because that will be assessed and your eligibility will be assessed separately for the two cases. On the second slide of this, of the registration process, I continue with the, uh, again, that with the stakeholder interest in participating to wave one, so for May 2024, there you're invited to submit the registration form, in particular part one and part two, as soon as possible to your local national center banks. Again, which NCB? It's the NCB of the jurisdiction where the market participant has opened a T2 RTGS account, or for market DLT operators, the NCB of the jurisdiction where the market DLT operator is licensed. And then what Claudine had said, the eligibility assessment can take place based on part one of the, of the form. And of course, additional documents provided by, uh, by, by applicants. Following the successful completion of a preliminary check of eligibility, participants will be invited to commence the testing and the onboarding process. So there, <clears throat> yes. So there, just to say, so the final confirmation, I mean, this is the small print but I would like to, to, to mention that as well. So the final confirmation of participate, participants eligibility will only be granted at a later stage. Uh, but of course, prior to the commencement of the execution phase of the exploratory work, because this participation is actually also subject to the governing council approval. So entities subject to an ongoing process, licensing process, may be permitted to participate to experiments only. So if, if the license, the license, I mean, you can apply without having the license, but the license must be there for trials before the trial start. Otherwise, we can discuss uh, whether you can be, whether you would be permitted to run experiments. So not an actual settlement in central bank money, but actually um, uh, mock settlements only. This would be then subject to a case by case basis and subject to our discretion uh, in, in looking at, at, at the individual cases. Then, after you have submitted your applications and following an in-principle assessment of interested market participants' eligibility, which will be conducted after the registration forms have been received, particularly for parts one and part two, the onboarding process will commence. So, from December to February, there is the possibility, but also the need to actually do mandatory testing activities in the phase one. There we test connectivity and basic operational functional tests with the eligible market participants and also with the eligible market DLT operators. From February to April, following the completion of the phase one testing, so this is so. That must have been, man I mean, the testing activity phase one mandatory and has to be completed successfully. Thereafter, there would be the mandatory testing activity of phase two. So that would comprise in particular a full day rehearsal. And of course, it's also necessary to sign the legal framework, as I've explained on the chart before, between the eligible market participants, the eligible market DLT operators and the euro system. So there, the contracts have to be there also before trials uh, trials take place. 
and also the exploration phase takes place, in general takes place. Then again, wave one, as, as illustrated by that icon, start again is in May. Um, and in June and July, there's an additional onboarding window for participants to the second wave. So that actually in July, the start of the exploratory phase of wave two, so trials and experiments could take place. So, summary. I go in the top, uh, actually in the top, I mean, row by row. So, firstly, again, the exploratory work is foreseen for duration of six months from May to November 2024. Then, the three on interoperability solutions that we have introduced can be tested in parallel or sequentially. So we offer them parallel, then it's up for you uh, to, to see whether you want to work with them in parallel or sequentially, but on our side, we offer them in parallel. Thirdly, the participants can participate from, uh, from May wave one and from July wave two. I think I've mentioned enough, uh, enough times actually when the deadlines are. Um, during the exploration work, the participants will provide the regular reporting on the results of trials and the experiments to the Euro system so that we can assess this. Um, then also the trials are foreseen on a regular basis during the time window when the trials are open. Um, so the trials are foreseen on a regular basis, so all of the working days. Uh, of T2 with a limited settlement window, however, from 9 to 10 o'clock, as I had explained before, until 2 o'clock. And lastly, the experiments, in contrast to the trials, they can be executed on the predefined days, so where we look into our Eurosys, I mean, our operational boundaries, uh, which we can, can decide on for experiments with an experiment specific framework. Thank you. And with that one, I open the floor for questions where, uh, where, as mentioned before, so you can write those in the chat and you can send also the email to mip.events at ecb.europa.eu. So, super. So just giving you guys a short breathing break there for uh, Holger and Claudine. Thank you so much. A lot of information here. We already had a few questions on registration and eligibility, but they were covered. I think they came before you guys presented it. So I think we're fine. Participants out there, if you still have questions on this, then shoot them in the chat or via email. If, we did, if you didn't think we followed up on that afterwards, but I think we did. Uh, also, just to, to mention to everyone, we're searching here in the question, so uh, give us a few minutes, but also to mention to everyone, the recordings of the whole session will be posted on the event webpage afterwards, so you will have the opportunity to go through everything again. Also, the slides, we will replace all the slides as well, so there's a lot of information here. We understand there's a lot of information on the slides that will be accessible to all of you very shortly after the session today, so do not worry. Also, Holger uh, referred a lot to the to the call for expression of interest. All the information on that call <clears throat> is also on the website. It's so all the links, everything is there as well. We in the chat we have posted the links to all of this, so so you can access that directly for the ones viewing the live stream. We will also make sure we share this with everyone. And for that, I just want to do a, a quick, uh, you know, follow us on all our uh, our communication channels. We have a newsletter. If you follow this, you get, you know, firsthand information of everything we do. So sign up for that same email address. Also, the we have a LinkedIn group where we also post everything. So there's big opportunities to get the information firsthand. Uh, but with that, I want to hand over to uh, Claudine and Holger. So quickly see if there are any questions in the in the chat or the emails that you think we have not covered. So over to you. Uh, I might I might cut first. Yes, I can, I can see a question there that um, seems to be related to the section that I covered. It's it's uh, relating to cash on the chain and if it is foreseen that commercial bank digital currency would be on the Eurosystem solutions 
or would wholesale central bank money be on the external platform? Um, so in answer to this, um, I suppose market participants could provide commercial bank money facilities and test their interbank settlement in, in central bank money. Um, however, it's, it is important to note that the commercial bank money tokens themselves would remain on platforms external to the euro system. But these platforms could then be connected to the um, the central bank solution providing solutions, so the euro system solution. So there's the connection between the two platforms, but uh, central bank money will remain uh, within the euro system's perimeter, and the commercial bank money tokens would remain external to this and and would be provided by by the market. Okay. Okay, sorry, I'm just screening. Actually, I'm, I'm screening, screening the, uh, the the questions here. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of questions. So bear with us, everybody. You're shooting in. This is great news, but just give us a few seconds here to go through. This is the fantastic thing about yeah. uh, doing it all live. Yeah, I mean, I'll one, one let question. Us know. Yep. Yes. So one one question was also, if there's a group, somebody called it a consortium. Uh, project so there is uh, which involves for example one market operators and several market participants uh, so will we uh, will can we where can we apply i mean can we get the uh, will we make a the contract with a quote unquote consortium or not so indeed as the in the question was also suggested so everybody has to apply for themselves so, uh, because we will actually look at everybody also, I mean, individually, it makes also the paperwork easier. If you actually are also involved on the reversely, if you are involved, if you want to do, for example, work together with several groups, then just specify that clearly in your supporting documentation. So everybody for themselves, so to say, for the uh, for the application, but please provide all of the overview of what you want to do, and if you do several, th I mean, if you want to do several things, you mention that clearly with, uh, and if, if you of course already know with whom it is, then please specify to us so that we can also put it together. But the legal work will be actually on a on a bilateral basis with everybody, and again. If you yeah, if you have uh, two different roles, so as a DLT market operator or as a market participant, again, it's two forms as well. We also have a few questions again on the legal side of it, but maybe you've you've mentioned this, Holger, but maybe you just want to stress this again. Uh, who is it that can apply? It's uh, the ones that already are applicable with the target services. Maybe you want to highlight that one again. So we have a few questions on that. Sorry. So we have a few questions again. You hear me? We have a few yeah. questions again on the legal side of it, like who yeah. can participate. Maybe you want to stress that one one more time. You've mentioned this in the presentation, uh, but I maybe. I think Claudine, maybe, if, will you take that? Yes, I can take that. Um, so you, you could uh, flick back to um, slide 20 or 33, I think it was. Um, no, 35. Sorry, um, as to who can apply. So um, we have the um, the previous slide to that. The maybe no previous again. <laughs> the other any anyway the the who can apply um, market participants. So those um, participants that already have access to target two um in terms of the, the target guideline and the market dlt um platform operators so um those operators that are uh, authorized under csdr so csds and um those operators that uh, operate a DLT uh, under the um, DLT pilot regime. And then the third category is uh, credit institutions, investment firms, um, other licensed financial institutions that are operating a platform uh, licensed under national framework. So the national transposition of CRD4, MIFID 2 or other national legal frameworks. In some jurisdictions, there's, there's specific national frameworks um, 
governing or licensing uh, these entities. Uh, for that third category um, of participants, uh, it would be subject to a case by case assessment to ensure that there's um, a, a, an equivalent um, risk management, proper risk management uh, procedures uh, and uh, regimes in place uh, that would be equivalent to the say CSDR or the, the DLT pilot regime. Um, so they're the, the two categories um, of participants that can apply. Um, and the, the call for interest sets out um, what's on this slide also and gives a bit more detail around um, what evidence uh, is required and what the case by case assessment would cover. Um, but essentially it is um, a, an almost a, a equivalence assessment just to ensure that, that the systems remain um, functioning in a, a safe and efficient manner um, because uh, we have to be cognizant that it is real central bank money that we are talking about settlement settling in trials. Um, and, and just on that, I, I know that I think I saw a couple of questions uh, regarding what's the difference between trials and experiments. Um, so trials will involve real central bank money in um, uh, ultimately in, in target two, so in our RTGS system uh, of the cash leg, uh, whereas experiments, um, the transactions are simulated transactions, their test transactions are mock transactions, transactions in, in test environments. So it would not involve um, settlement of um, real money, uh, real cash leg transactions in, in, in target two. So I think uh, I've covered um, two, two questions there. I hope that, yeah. that um, sufficiently covers yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, there was also uh, a question now. I mean, I have to admit it's a challenge to read uh, and, and sort out the, the many questions. So if I read that well, so regarding the um, that, that innovation starts without licenses because, of course, it's innovation. There's a disruption. So that's true. That's also what, uh, and that's where it leads to proof of concepts. Uh, and maybe something at a smaller scale uh, might be possible. But just one point just to say here. So we provide this, I mean, and you bank on, you rely on that central bank money is the safest settlement asset. So it's very clear that uh, it's, it's very clear that actually we want that the impact on target services, I mean, there's no adverse impact on, on, on our services that we provide. Hence, uh, hence, we actually insist there also for the trials that everything is is licensed. So that's uh, that that is important. That's important to say. We also do know, of course, there's always a trade-off between safety and innovation. So we do know that, and that's why uh, why we, for example, also said that. Uh, that for experiments where there's not an actual settlement in central bank money, still it uses our our test environment, uh, but where there's not an actual settlement of central bank money, we can be more flexible. So we could, if somebody has asked for a license but didn't get it, for example, decide that that entity could participate there. Um, and of course, we are we are looking then in particular at so we we care. As you see, because we have kind of two type of participants, it's well, the, the the banks or those with target. I mean, access to targets. So that's the uh, that's one. And then we have the market DLT operator. There might, of course, be other parties involved, like service providers or so. That's I, I mean, we will we 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 actually make contracts only with the with the uh, market participant and with the DLT operator. If there are other service providers, I mean, all that needs to be of course done in a in a safe way but there is scope for for others to uh, to come in there i do not know is there anything else you would like to add on that put in yeah i i think you you've touched on it but um maybe just to say that that eligible market dlt operators could partner with the technology providers that them they themselves say the technology providers are not licensed um, but there's nothing um, in our setup. Uh, there's uh, we're not putting in any rules to say that those technology providers cannot partner with an eligible um, 
market DLT operator. And then it's the, the market DLT operator that will say uh, apply to uh, or register interest to participate in, in the, um, the trials and experiments, but they will be working in, in conjunction with um, the, the technology providers that they themselves are, are not licensed. Yeah, and there are other questions. So would we first need to apply to that, I mean, to the, for example, to the DLT pilot regime or other licenses, of course, that Claudine had, had mentioned, and then apply here? Well, uh, base, basically, you can do that in parallel, but logically, I mean, but we will look at that. Have, do you have the license or is it in progress then for experiments? But for trials, it has to be one of the, one of the points there. Um, yeah, so there was also again, uh, Holger, you thought you said it a lot, but there was a few questions again on the timeline. I'm just showing uh, here one of the slides, not this one. Let me try to find the the right one with the with your timeline on. There was a question on that one, so we can just place that on the screen. This one, uh, there was a few questions on that again. So for everyone, uh, you know, yes, so really, guys, uh, bear with us. There's a lot of oh, yeah, yeah. Actually, maybe, maybe I use that occasion because I saw there were also questions for and what about 2025 <laughs> timeline? So point one, the call for expression of interest is open since 13 December. You can apply as of now. So after the session, you log off, download the form, fill it in. As said, so and then, as said, also, if you have, uh, if you have actually, well, download the form, fill it in, and actually applied, then there will be an eligibility assessment, which can happen any time now. So if you want to participate for the full six months as of May, you can do that from now, over Christmas until thirty first of January. Um, when the eligibility assessment or in principle eligibility assessment is positive, then actually the testing, like the connection test, that can start actually very quickly. Uh, there will also be later on after that is completed. Um, and it's it's clear that you will actually participate, then we can also do the more complex testing, like going through the trial days. Uh, but uh, but the testing has to be the first testing has to be completed before, and then there is the other testing. And in May, it's clear when it starts. You must have successfully done the testing. You must have by May all licenses in place, so that actually you can participate as of wave one. You have more time for the testing for the licensing to clarify that if you participate for wave two, because there the deadline for applying is in April. And then um, and then you uh, you can actually start the exploratory work as of July. Make it more complicated. You can, of course, already now apply for wave two. But uh, we look at all the applications for wave one and wave two together after the deadline. Um, and then in November, again, the explore, exploratory work, so trials and experiments will stop then in November for all participants, no matter when you started. And uh, what happens then? That's, I mean, that's the, uh, that's the unknown, of course, what we will do, as said before, we ask you for data, I mean, you, participants in this. So we ask for data. So we will evaluate this. We will evaluate the finding and see what lessons to learn. We will also, this. I mean, we will also use, we have a contact group, uh, which is, a, well, you can, you can think of it as a sounding board for us. We will actually discuss aggregate findings there and, and in, and, and uh, ask them also to help us to complement our internal analysis and and help us to, to make the best conclusions out of what we have learned from that. Well, and then it depends on the result, I mean, on the results that we have, what we do. There is, of course, also um, Ulrich Binsal in the first presentation, he had shown, uh, he had shown other possibilities, which are not based on interoperability. So the integration and the distribution approach, as we call it. So we will then have to evaluate thereafter I mean, the one thing is, uh, well, 
to pursue this much further, of course, makes only sense if, if, if actually the market is really using DLT or is moving in this direction. So that's the one thing. Otherwise, I mean, it will be a nice, nice analysis um, uh, that we have done. But it's if the market is not using it, there's not necessarily a need for central banks to make central bank money available in that form. That's one point. So from that point of view, even if results are nice, everything works fine, uh, anything could be implemented. But if the market doesn't move, there's no reason for actually launching a big project, which will which will be uh, an in intensive investment um, and continue this. If the market continues to move in that direction, the central bank, again, we have the interest to provide central bank money in a form that is relevant for the market. Then we have to see what is the most suitable form. There will also be other policy questions. What is the best form to do this? Uh, is, it, is it one of the models we have implemented now? Is it something else? That will depend on the findings, on policy considerations that we have and developments. Uh, and developments that are there. Um, so, of I'll just course, let if, you breathe. Uh, yeah, okay, yes. okay, go ahead. So, of course, <laughs> if, if you were looking for a specific answer, this is simply this is simply not possible uh, at this moment. I mean, we are of course also fully aware of other discussions. For, I mean, uh, for example, if you consider the the uh, BIS, uh, the, the unified unified ledgers, uh, global la layer ones. We are also, I mean, we are also monitoring these developments, see what has to be done. In any case, we think that actually the interoperability, which we which we now is the focus of this exploratory work, it's important to have these features because uh, because the, I mean, for many. For many years, I mean, there will, there in even for for those who think that actually the DLT is the main scenario, the market will move in this direction. It's unclear <laughs> that actually, well, if one looks at now, some people still use faxes uh, to correspond with their custodians. Um, there is a use of different standards. Um, so if one looks at that now, there can be the case that actually different jurisdictions move at different speed. It can be within the market. Some are very advanced, some move slower. So there will be existing technology for quite some time. There, there might be DLT. Uh, so one always has to think about how does one actually link those two worlds and what some interoper. Uh, so even in a scenario where DLT is the future, there will always be a case where one needs the uh, I mean interoperability part. Also. You may, as a bank, for example, you may have actually some things where you do trade financing, supply chain uh, relations. So you will have to see, not everything may be on the same DLT platform anyway. So some interoperability mechanism is always, is always needed. And we look, I mean, and, and think of what will be our next step after the results of this exercise, taking into account other external developments and taking into account other policy uh, considerations that Mr. Binzal mentioned actually in his in his welcome speech. All right, good. I'll just let you go through and see a few more. There was a there was a, it's a bit like Christmas, right, uh, Claudine? There was a question of on the on the solutions on the NCB's actual use. We will talk more about that. That is coming, everybody. So after the break, we will go into details on this. So uh, you know, just that's, uh, that's yeah. coming. <laughs> it's, that's that's coming. But just to say, uh, well, it's Christmas, um, maybe. But actually, so this is not just this is not just us doing a gift. So just to be just to be clear. So I mean, we provide the we provide the opportunity now. I mean. Uh, for you to actually take part in this exploration work, including then the trials with actual settlement in central bank money. So it's, it is, uh, it's a uh, rather innovative approach of what we do there. We help to foster innovation with that. And of course, again, we, we actually do that also because we want to see of, if that is relevant for the market, how can we provide central bank money in the form that is useful for the market? But in the end, it is an opportunity also for you, and actually it is also for the market to actually find and demonstrate the business cases 
use cases for what can be done, how can it be done, how is it useful, not just for you, also for your clients, for, for all the various actors in the market and on different markets. So the responsibility for kind of, I mean, uh, for, for making the idea a success, that's up for the market to come up with, uh, with those. And this is an opportunity that you can use. Um, and then again, on us is the point of, okay, if the market is going in that direction, if the market is doing this, so what would be a relevant way to do it? And of course, an efficient one, we will have to look at both at our perspective, but also the overall market, how can it be work efficiently and what are what is the cost benefit of various solutions if they have to be implemented? Okay. Um, so, so in, and I, yeah, um, I know that we have the solution providers yet to come, but there's been a couple of questions about uh, interoperability between the solutions themselves. So maybe if you want to, I think it's slide 20 where we have the overview of, yes, this one. Um, so um, the market DLTs will connect, have a technical connection to the individual solution providing uh, solutions. So a technical collection to either the um, trigger, uh, the DL3 um, DLT, or the uh, tip slash link, or, or uh, uh, three, they could have potentially three connections. Uh, when we're testing interoperability, it's between the uh, market DLTs, the uh, your system solutions, and, and ultimately target services. It's not interoperability between the three solutions, the tr trigger, DL3S and the tip slash link. So um, would say a market DLT can't connect to uh, the Bundesbank trigger and then use that in order to connect into the, the other two um, or, or the market participant for that matter. Uh, in terms of the market participants, I think it's important also to, to, to differentiate here in terms of the liquidity and the exploratory liquidity. There is a different approach uh, for the uh, DL3 um, SDLT and the TIPS hash link versus the, the trigger chain in that we have the uh, escrow mechanism and the funding slash defunding for, for the DL3S and, and the TIPS hash link. Uh, so for the escrow mechanism, the market participants need to lock that liquidity in the target system, the target two platform, their um, dedicated cash accounts. They need to transfer though that liquidity, whatever liquidity they plan on using during the day, they transfer that to the NCB, their local NCB at the start of the day. That tr liquidity that's transferred is then converted into uh, exploratory liquidity on the, um, the, the solution for use uh, in DVPs or PVPs or whatever transactions are happening uh, on an intraday basis um, between the uh, your system solutions and the market DLT platforms. At the end of the day, then uh, between the window uh, after two o'clock, between two o'clock and three thirty, um, the defunding takes place, uh, the reconciliation, and then there are liquidity transfers back to the uh, market participants on target two um, with respect to the, the equivalent amount that they would have remaining on their uh, wallets or their accounts on, on the uh, your system solutions at the end of the day. So it's about testing interoperability between the your system solutions and the market DLTs, not between the various your system solutions themselves. I, I hope that's clear. And and also there was a question I saw on uh, whether technology prov I mean uh, sorry no another one um, whether whether actually participants once the trial starts have to announce concrete transactions executing uh, the the concrete uh, transactions to the euro system before they happened uh, should should it be shared uh, ex ante so. There, I would refer to what I mentioned uh, as uh, for the registration part three. So to give us actually, please, additional information on planned use cases for exploratory work. And on the slide, we already said that indeed, including anticipated volumes. Uh, and of course, there will be a dialogue with you. So while on a normal day with normal transactions, you don't tell us before what you are, uh, what you are doing. Uh, this for the trial, it is somewhat different. So we have some operational boundaries. As I said, we have a strong interest 
nothing, just uh, there must be no adverse effect on um, on target services. So we have some uh, we have put some operational boundaries. So let us know so that we can uh, that we can plan that accordingly. As as I said, so some operational boundaries may apply. We have to see whether they will whether we will uh, they will be effective or whether or whether actually everything stays within. But but they 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 could apply. There could be restrictions and. And, and maybe that would, could speak for discussing of whether one can do that. Uh, well, I mean, uh, adjust a little bit the timing of something so that it's not crammed all on one day, for example. That's of course, again, it's something which is specific for the trials. That is not, if, if ever this was uh, implemented or something similar, this is of course not how it would work in the future. That's the point of that we do something with live systems. systems. I see one or two questions regarding um, eligibility assessments and um, the legal agreements and, and who best to talk to. Of course, uh, any follow-up questions can be directed to us, but with regard to the assessments themselves and, and the direct engagement, um, I would suggest that as a first port that you would engage with your local NCB, uh, because in particular for the, the national uh, legal frameworks. Uh, it's the, the local NCB and the national competent authorities that are best placed to um, assess these and, and um, they will be assessing um, the um, it call for interests that come in to the local national central bank. So uh, as with uh, current target services, the um, direct relationship with the market participants remains with the, the national uh, central bank. Yeah. And then also, I mean, I would really encourage, of course, in this presentation, some things we highlighted, I think on the date, mentioned it many times, uh, but of course, there's much more information in our material. So I would really suggest you to read that material. I mean, I was talking, for example, uh, about the uh, uh, operational boundaries. So we have put, for example, uh, in the documentation that we have provided. So then volumetric limits and trials and experiments and uh, operations in T2 and trials. So we have actually put that uh, into the documentation. So please look at the call for expression of interest, read it very carefully before you apply uh, and, and then look at that. So there's much more information there. So please read all the documents, very important so that it's clear what you're doing. And otherwise, again, I think there are many, yeah, many points on the licensing, etc. But I, I think that actually uh, Claudine has been has been clear that actually which licenses are possible for us in this in this euro system in this euro area uh, set up where we actually uh, do the do the trials and the experiments. So. Um, so the, it it must it must be something which is licensed. I mean, which which is uh, for licenses that, that, that are applicable here. Then, Claudine, colleagues, are there questions that we ought to do? So we will look again. We will look actually with a bit more calm later on, uh, and. If there are questions which are not covered in the material. Uh, that is already published. If there are, um, but but uh, so they are they are relevant questions. They are not covered in the material, etc. We may actually put out a further Q and A document. I don't want to promise. It depends on the case. So we will look more carefully at it, because many questions, I believe, the ans I mean, uh, the answers to many of the questions will become clear when you read carefully the documentation. And of course, for some details, again. There's the local national center bank where you apply, you contact them. There's also the details of who the contacts are, how to contact the national center bank so that you can look at that because there are also some questions which may be very specific for, for you. So uh, so there, there has to be better an, uh, an, a, a, a bilateral discussion than on this. 
All right, thank you, Holger. Thank you, Claudine. Um, so, as I said, lots of questions, so we will go through all of them after the event as well. Um, but one, but one last. Yeah, there, you, uh, Olga found one more that he just wants yeah, to cover. No, no, just got so, time to go. I mean, uh, so really want to emphasize because there are questions on the finality. So we take care of the cash lag. And now for the trials, uh, I mean, really be, look carefully also at the rules for the DLT operator. Who, um, for that one to ensure the settlement finality of the asset lag. So, um, so that, I mean, you must go through, I mean, really for everything, I mean, it's real money. So, so really go carefully through all documentation uh, that will be provided uh, so that it's clear of uh, what, what you're up to. So we, for the purpose of the trials, um, so for the purpose of the trials, we take care of the cash set there. And, then and maybe the just to, to complement that, Holger, just to, to say that um, essentially atomic settlement will, is going to be simulated on the, the DLT platform, so on DL3S and the TIPS hash link in particular, um, that actual settlement in central bank money will only occur when the uh, liquidity transfers and the, the defunding happens at uh, the end of the settlement day. So it'll be a, a couple of hours later um, between the period of two to, to three 30 uh, yep. when the actual settlement finality of the the central bank money cash leg takes place but for the purposes of um uh, trials uh it's simulated and and as as holger already mentioned during his um presentation it will feel um and is meant to represent as close as possible what would happen in a steady state scenario but um this is a, a trial setup specific to trials and the uh, escrow mechanism and the defunding process has been constructed in order to uh, allow us um provide the uh, the platforms to to the industry at, at this juncture to carry out the trials but uh, settlement finality of the central bank money cash leg will only take place when the defunding happens